Happy New Year. Happy New Year. So, how have you been? I've been good. Yeah, it was a nice time. I had a lot of fun. Oh, that's interesting. Go for it. Pretty unexpected. It's actually a friend of a friend. I met her like a long time ago and she came here and we reconnect. And uh -huh. it was good. It was good that we connect with this need of touch and sharing. And it was beautiful. It was very fulfilling. That's nice. I have a connection between having holidays and smoking. Yes, yeah. always drugs and having fun. There was a few things that it was like pretty clear. The universe tells me you have to stop this. One day fall in my garden. It could be really harmful. It, it was like nothing. It's like really the universe telling me that's enough. You don't need this anymore. It was good, but I have kind of a strategy for the holidays, for this disconnection between holidays and having this behavior. I'm also trying not to like be like very enjoy the process and it's yes, it's okay. It's yes, I'm trying to do my best and going step by step. But the universe, I think, is getting more raw on this and telling me you have to stop. You should consider have, it. I if it's speaking, you should consider it. Yeah. Or if yeah, you feel yeah. that you're receiving a message, then it's good to. Yeah, no, it's, it it's clear as it gets. <laughs> okay. But I'm, so, but first of all, now, the... but, I've, but I've been clean like the, maybe 10 days or something like that. I feel much better when I'm clean. I'm more in contact with myself. Otherwise, sure. there's a lot, a lot of noise, yeah. like a heavy monkey on my shoulder. Sure. <laughs> there's also kind of a numbing process. So, it takes a lot of energy and brings you back. And then, the more you regain your energy, the more clarity, of course. I understood a few things though. Once I, I, uh, I connect more with my sense of humor, I'm uh, more fluent on having fun and be like more, more humorous. And you're smoking okay. or not? When I'm smoking, when I'm smoking. So what is it in other words? I believe that uh, otherwise I'm very serious. It's like a mischievous child. Mm, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you see, you see what personality is the personality that needs it or is connected with it. It's yeah, a personality of the child that has been repressed into uh, feeling happiness and playfulness and enjoying. That's interesting. Yeah, I think it is. I think it is. It is a big part of it. Yeah, yeah. It's actually it's very true. It's, it's like the child having some space to play around. Why I'm not able to connect with this child without this? Because there are these uh, things that are pulling back, which is the personality, as you say, I'm most serious when I'm not smoking. Like things become very important. Things become serious. You are too much connected with the who you are or who you think you are. The child is not connected with who they are. They are connected with the moment. They are enjoying now and being present in that and they don't give a shit. Remember when we're talking about playing, there is no purpose in play. There's no purpose. It's just enjoying. When you were younger, you were doing shit with your hands and you were having fun. You were speaking languages that did not exist or you're playing a game with your friends. And the point is nobody's keeping score at the end of the day. Some are, but it, most of us are there for the pushing and the hugging and the laughing and the messing around. So there's no point in the messing around. There, it's not taking you somewhere. While in contrast, our personalities are the vehicles that take us somewhere. They take us through life. And this is important. And it's so sad when these two come in contrast. Because you see how much you can enjoy life, the moment, yourself, the real self, the capital self, and be present. And the other one is like a stupid asshole that is trying to be something or someone. It's most of the times I'm trying to find meaning in everything or having this spiritual or really deep sense of myself or life or whatever. It's too heavy. And the essence of the spiritual path, who was it, this guy that said, when I realized that all my teachers have, were cheating on me, were lying. 
They were all not saying the real thing, which is, there's no point. There's nothing in it. I had the mystery of everything in my own pocket and I was touching it with my hand. That's, that's the idea that we think there is a kind of great ending or meaning or purpose. There is no purpose. It's all about playing. And enjoyment. Yeah. There's no going. There's not achieving. There's not something to realize or be. It's just recognizing who we are. And we are that already. In that sense, what's the point? There's no point. Enjoy the fucking thing. This playful yeah. behavior. There is a key to all of it. This playful behavior doesn't require anything. It's not uh, aiming for something. It's not aiming to please or be pleased. It's just, it just is. So the key is don't caring about what other people think. So you just, as a child, you don't give a shit. So you punch a guy in the face, like we're doing a meditation circle with kids. And I was giving the instruction, just close your eyes and just be here. And I was giving the next directions. And of course, I'm not closing my eyes. I'm not stupid. They're fucking seven-year-old kids there can kill each other. And they, one goes like this, and there's another one next to him and hits him. <laughs> and, and why, why? He says, he hit me. Why did you hit him? Because I could. <laughs> that was the resume of the final thing. He was there and I had the chance to give him one and I gave him one. And I don't give a shit what you guys think. This guy, although mischievous and an asshole or whatever, he's living the moment. And really, he's really playing because they had the thing earlier and the other one was kind of being more like the chief or whatever. And so now you're thinking, okay, now I'm taking some blood back. Here we go. There's no logic. There's no fair play. And for sure, these guys don't give a shit about what others think. They just go for it. I understand otherwise it's self-importance. They're going to hurt me. Oh. But oh. of course. But They're going to reject It's me. always self-important. I was uh, actually, I'm repeating myself from the station or it's like a continuation. <laughs> it happens sometimes. But like I was saying, I have this friend. Uh, it's a childhood friend that we're very really close friends. And now he lives in England. So sometimes we chat at night. We have a small chat. And um he was telling some things to me and he was saying, oh, don't take it the wrong way, but I feel that you and you. he was saying that I did some things or that I was good at that, or he was scolding me for something and he was saying, don't take it the wrong way. And I'm thinking, I don't give a shit about what he's saying. I don't care. I don't really don't care. And I love this guy. It's not that I don't care about this guy, but what he's saying, his idea about me, I'm not saying he's saying it to show that I have a level or whatever. I, but really, I don't give a shit. You can tell me, oh, you're the best guy. And you can say, oh, you're the worst one. I don't give a fuck. Really, I don't give a fuck. The things I do give a fuck is, for example, if I can offer to the world, if my personality can appear there, if I can do some good or have some nice things to talk about at the end of the day, to really help or laugh or enjoy. This is what would make me sad. But your opinion about me, fuck it. No, it has no place. Our relationship has a place. I'm experiencing this right now, and this is fun or not, and this is good. But if you think I am this type of person, yeah, go ahead and think about it. You couldn't even say it. You couldn't even say you're an asshole, and I, or you bastard, you don't th think you know a lot, and you don't. Yeah, go ahead. Fine. Or you can say, oh, how wonderful. When I listen to the how wonderful, it's like, oh, my God. So much shit, like really for nothing. Because these people who also would do the compliment, they have something there. We are taught that our relationship is a kind of give and take. Or if I offend someone or if they offend me, and if I have an opinion about you or me, this kind of creates a sense of peace and a sense of if I'm good with everyone, everything is in place. I understand and I'm respecting you and you're respecting me. And that's fine. I understand respect, but not in the aspect of the appearance of the personality. I have my opinion about you and I can say fuck off and I can still stay with you in the same room, for example. 
And also the opinions, they are based on the filtering of the reality. It's, just a, a, it's, 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 it's completely contaminated, let's say, by our belief or ourselves and our, uh, by the world. It's not so much the world of our neurosis, it's of our understanding, actually, of our lack of a complete being. Because neurosis is how they appear, it's actually noise of unfinished business and they define somehow the personality. So the personality is defined by our incompleteness, not by who we are, by who we are not. Funnily enough, the holiday thing and drugs is always connected because it's a simple thing, I believe, because it has to do with relaxation a lot. Holidays come, you're not working, or you're finally at the house and can do nothing or see a movie at three o'clock in the afternoon. So you're relaxing more. And because many times we cannot relax or are connecting with a relaxed feeling, we need to go more. What gives me more relaxation? Ah, smoking or drinking or whatever. And you go more for it in that sense. So it is this need to be relaxed and, and, and just being. And in most cases, we're trying to enhance it with all that. And of course, connected with memories, past things that we have been through or live. Oh, I remember with my friend Javier, we used to have joints at Christmas and gathering in that house and kind of the memory is there. So it clicks again. I guess also another part is that when there's emptiness and when there's like a space to do nothing, then you connect with yourself. And it's, oh, no, this is not time to connect with myself. It's time it to relax. Good. That's a good point. One thing that I think is just like a pattern in my life is just also have a lot of things to do. Like always have one thing on top, on top, top. So to not be able to have a space just to connect with myself. One of the things that is one of my compromises for this year is just to do the work, to do the practices. Not we are agreed, have a schedule. I'm very good at schedule the, the professional life and I'm super organized. Get the practices on my normal basis. I think it is this kind of resistance to get in touch. But I have all the, I was feeling this morning. And the only thing that I'm maybe a little preoccupied or, or a little concerned is that I'm not still connected with my feelings. I'm trying to, okay, I do the practice, like how I'm feeling. And that's nothing. And I keep on trying and it still is this nothingness. Or I don't know if I have to increase my sensibility and I just have to trust the process. I'm trying to connect and identify my feelings. What I suggest in this case is going to that emptiness. So you're saying, what am I feeling now? And I'm saying nothing. Go into that nothing. Really allow yourself to be in that. Do not judge the nothing. What you're doing, you're judging now. You're saying nothing, but nothing, but what the fuck? Maybe I'm not doing it right. No. What am I feeling? Nothing. Be with that. So the more you are with that, you will notice that things appear. But do not judge. This is the thing. It's like saying, oh, I am angry. Why am I angry? Should I be angry? Is it a good thing to be angry? For example, I had a thing yesterday with a guy and I told him at some point, I said, look, do not speak to me now because I am angry. And I didn't say anything else. I didn't shout at him. I didn't swear at him. I didn't do anything physically. I just said, look, please do not speak to me now because I am angry. And I kept on doing what I was doing. And then we talked about it and he said, yeah, but you were angry. I said, yeah, I'm allowed to be angry. Who the fuck are you to tell me that I'm not? Why? Why is it bad to be angry? But I cannot deal with angry people around me. That's your problem. It's not my problem. But this is the reality. This is the truth. Emotions, when they are free, they appear totally. And whatever emotion they are, they leave a sense of pleasure at the end. <laughs> so this is a totally lived emotion. Like, I'm angry. I'm leaving my anger right now. And I'm feeling good with it. I'm happy and I'm feeling good. I'm sad and I'm feeling good because sadness is there. Fully lived emotions leave a sense of pleasure. And it is this pleasure of allowing tension to disappear and the pleasure of actually not being that. <laughs> it's much, much deeper. I understand this emptiness. It is a state and it will bring out feelings.
It will bring out other things. You have to accept it as it is, as like a ballpark. It will happen somewhere here. This is it. This is a glass in its own. It doesn't mean much. It's a medium for having water. Mm -hmm. Wait enough and maybe water will appear in that sense, in this medium. It's the ballpark. It will happen there at some point. So you see the emptiness and you accept it and be present with that. And maybe something appears. Maybe an emotion appears or not, or maybe a sensation or not. Or you're just being present in this emptiness. Wrong about that. Also, it's just also maybe like a sense of the wrongness when I'm doing yeah. wrong or also expectation. For instance, yeah. one example or as a, something meaningful that it will be a sign that I'm blocking is that I will be able to cry because for me, crying is like impossible. And I really will love to cry. I'll be there on the 4th and 5th of February and you will cry. Don't worry. <laughs> you will be at the seminar and you will cry. Don't worry about it. It's not so important. Also, there is a lot, I'm just joking, there is a lot into this type of things that we program ourselves. I cannot cry. I never get angry. I'm a loving person or whatever. There is a lot of the neurosis and the personality that goes in there. You might say that, but I'm just noticing that I cannot cry. And that's all. I'm not saying that it's bad or good. I just cannot do it. Yeah, but that's fine. Somehow you are putting it into this radar of expression of personality. And the more it's on that radar and it's conscious that way, it's difficult to appear in a different way. You are not going to be so open to observe the changing or a different emotion in that sense. It's like a self-fulfilling proper thing. Yeah. I, I believe that I cannot cry and then I'm not open to the crying somehow. Exactly. In therapy sometimes when somebody cannot cry or cannot laugh or whatever, we just use a suggestion. Mm-hmm.